Well, hey folks, Fat Guy Flies RC here. Coming to you from the man cave. If this is your first time joining me. Welcome. We're going to be putting, uh, we've already put together the um, basic build of the Arrows RC uh, 50 millimeter Viper. And now we're going to do the radio setup. Now, have the basic. I have not put any profile. Say this is your first model. I'm using an NX10, but the principles that I'm showing you will work with any spectrum uh, transmitter that has a computer uh, type screen. So let's go ahead and set up our basic our basic uh, profile. Okay, we're going to add a new model. It's going to take a second. Hit create. Transmitter has to think about it. The, long, the more models you have on, the longer it's going to take. Okay. Don't have to do model select. We've already, we are. What type? Well, obviously, it's an airplane. Okay. We'll go with the model name. Okay. So I like to use the arrows. A R R. Uh, oh, oh, oh. A R O. W, S, and then you go to space, then we'll go to RC, then we'll go space, and this will be V, I, P, E, R, space, Five, zero, and then we'll have two M's. All right, Arrows RC Viper 50 millimeter. Go back, okay. Model type is a regular wing, okay, nothing special. Go down here to the image. It's something that kind of reminds me of it, okay. Now, while we're here, We'll go back out to the regular, the regular screen. Okay, we're going to go to the function. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, we're going to go with function list. We're going to go to timer. Actually, we're going to go to throttle cut first. Throttle cut, and then when you get here, click your roller to select it, and then select your button. I like using H. I hit H, it fixed H. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead while I'm here, go to the timer. Set my timer for three and a half minutes. Usually what I do with jets. Next, next. I like using voice for all this, almost all this. If I can get my thing here, it will, fingers to work for me. Now, for, for time expired, I like voice and vibrate. And then here I go, I inhibit these. Otherwise, what happens if you don't, every time you hit that throttle or move that throttle, you hear that constant beep. Okay? That drives me nuts. So I now have the basic setup for the model in here. Throttle cut set, timer set. And I'm ready to bind once I install my receiver. Now, you have all these cables coming out. And then if you remember in the unboxing, I fished the wing through. And I've got these two servo leads that aren't hooked up to anything. But if you look, coming off the back of the uh, vector system are these two pigtails, these two secure connects. So you're going to take them. It doesn't matter which one, and you're going to hook up your ailerons, okay? Pay attention to your polarity, okay? What I mean by polarity, the color of the wires. You see it has that yellow wire on this side, and on here, on this side, the yellow wire. You're going to line those two up. So let me go ahead and put them both in there, and I'll show you what it looks like when you're done. Okay. You should feel them click in. Grab my little safety clip, the little pigtail. 
and line up my servos, and line, or line up my leads, light to light, dark to dark. That's always the polarity, okay? And then when you get done with those, that's how they should look, okay? The light should line up with it. It's kind of hard to see at this angle, but the light should line up with the light on both of those, light to light, dark to dark. It's obvious when you look at it, okay? I'm just going to kind of tuck all that down in there, up and out of the way. Try to keep your, your, your cables and your leads as neat and less pronounced as possible, okay? Try to keep everything tucked away and nice and neat. All right. All the cables, everything's up, up in there. I'll leave that alone. Okay. Now I want to take my receiver. All right. This is a Spectrum Protocol receiver. Okay, it's a Limit RX Gen 2. With Spectrum receivers, channel 1 is always throttled. So I look on here, and there is channel 1. Then channel 2 is always aileron. Channel 3 is always elevator. Channel 4 is always rudder. And then channel 5 is gear. Channel 6 is flaps. And this particular type of receiver has a, has a second auxiliary, or actually seven channel, and it's on the other side of the bind. And you can use that for whatever you want to use it for. So you're not, this is really don't need, you only need a four channel receiver for this plane. So channel 1 is throttle. I'm going to take the lead that's labeled throttle. And I'm going to put it into channel one. That's throttle. Channel two will be ailerons. Okay. Channel three will be elevators. Now all the control surfaces of this plane and throttle are now hooked up, and it should look, whether it's your Spectrum receiver or a Limit RX receiver, the top of the receiver is where the label is. Okay. So the top, your servo leads, the light wire should be on top. It should all look light. And then the label. Okay. Now, this S bus, it's one I have not hooked up. It says S bus mode. It is going to hook up to another channel that I'm going to use. And I'm going to use that seventh channel or auxiliary channel. Okay. You could put it in the rudder channel if you want. You can put whatever you want, but you're going to have to assign it to a three position switch. And this setup just looks neater for me. Okay. All four are on one side. Now I'm going to take this, this receiver, since it, it's not position dependent, I'm just going to put it at the very bottom of the fuselage, take the piece of two-sided tape that comes with it, and I'm going to mount my receiver. Mount it right there on the floor, out of the way. I'm take all of them wires, I'm going to shove them behind the receiver, get them up, up and out of the way. Just kind of have to massage all them wires back and out of the way. Keep your setup as neat, and I'll show you when I get done in just a second, as neat as possible. Okay. sure I don't unplug anything. Alright, so now that's what I got. I got the receiver there. My wires are all nice and secure. They're not going to interfere with my elevator servo. Okay. Now, here's a pro tip. I'm going to take, I'm going to need a little Allen wrench. And we're going to undo wrong size. We're going to undo the um, this quick connect uh, this grub screw that's holding these two elevator controls in. And I have to get a different size. Probably a 1.5 millimeter. Yeah. Okay. What I just did, as you see right there, that servo there, okay? I'm gonna push 
that's where these control rods are. So I'm going to grab one and watch. Watch right there where my thumb is. Watch that metal piece. Okay. Watch it slide in and out. Okay. Maybe see it. See it move? Grab the other one. Okay. Watch that move. See that move? I'm going to leave them in that channel, but then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to go ahead and hook up the uh, clevises to the control, the control arms of the, of the uh, control surface. And I'm going to go to the inside hole, so that's what I like. I want to have the most control of my elevator. Let me show you what that looks like when I'm done. Same thing to this side, to the inside hole. Put that click in. Uh, come on. When you slide your fuel tubing up over your clothes, don't go all the way to the very end. Just maybe about a, uh, an eighth of an inch away from the connection because you don't want that uh, control, uh, you don't want that to bind your connection, okay? I'm gonna make sure, now I've got, those are all connected, so now I'm gonna make sure that this is completely straight across, because I could move these, but I don't want to. I wanna make these completely straight across, okay? And I'm gonna leave them there, I'm not gonna, I'll tighten up just a little bit so they don't slide out, but I'm not anchoring them down. Okay? Just enough to keep them down. Now I'm going to take my battery. I'm going to use. Okay? Here I've got a piece of Velcro. I'm going to put my battery in there. I'll worry about mounting my antennas in a minute. Right now I just want to get this uh, airplane bound up. All right. Now, with these Gen 2s, they have a bind button. Okay? You're going to press that bind button until the receiver starts to flash. Oh, oh I hit the wrong one. Okay, now it's in bind, in bind mode, okay? The plane is searching for signal. It's saying we got a brain, but it's not hooked to anything. So we're gonna go to bind. Yes, bind. All right, bind's complete. I'm gonna go here, turn my volume up. All right, now, the plane is freaking out on what's going on. Take my throttle, go all the way down. Turn my throttle off, throttle back on. Okay. Unplug it. I'm going to plug it back in. Going through its little dance. Okay. <laughs> There's no word. The elevator works. My ailerons work. My draw, draw cut is off. So, oh, there's a piece of plastic up in there. Oh, that backing off of that. Okay. Now we know we've got communication, but if you notice, my elevator, when I pull back on the elevator, it should go up and say it's going down. And my ailerons, I think they're wrong too. Yep, my ailerons are backwards. All right, so let's, before we address that gyro, the vector system, 
let's fix our travel connect our tra our travel throws. You're gonna go to your function list, you're gonna go to servo setup, I'll go to travel, and go to reverse. I'll reverse the aileron and reverse the elevator. Okay. Now look at the elevator. I pull when I pull up on the I'll pull back on the elevator where elevators are going up. Look at that elevator in the foreground. It's going up. See? Going up. Now, look at the far aileron, right aileron. Should pick up. Everything's working the way it should. All right, so technically she's ready to fly, but we have the vector system, okay? So remember I told you I wanted to use that aux B, that seventh channel on the receiver? So I'm gonna go back here to system start setup. Are you sure? Yeah, that model's not gonna go anywhere. I'm going to go to, even though it's searching for signal, see where it says aux 2? I, I like that being on B, because that's where I, I want to have it. It's on my B switch here. And I want to make sure. Sorry, we lost signal for a second. Lost camera. All right. Remember, I wanted to make sure that aux 2 was aux 2. So let me show you how that looks on the transmitter. System setup. Channel assign, aux 2 is B. Go to the port assignment and make sure that aux 2 is aux 2, okay? Then you can go back to your model, okay? All right, and remember I put that on, have that on B. This is my B switch. Now let me show you what that means. Now, you can't, ch now you can reverse it, but the way they have that set up, the furthest away from you, or it's, it's down, the, the switch is towards the bottom of the receiver, that is their safe mode, or uh, what they call stability. And look at that elevator. Look at the elevator. See how it's, tip, it's tipping up? So what would that do? That would make the plane want to right. Watch this aileron. As I tilt the plane, this aileron is kicking up, and that would level the plane. Okay, so now I know that the V switch in the lowest position on position zero is their version of safe or stabilized mode. If I take it to the middle position, nothing. Nothing's happening. No change in the control service. I hear no gyros. Nothing at all. And now here's the, the position I'll be using. Pull the switch in closest to me or it's towards the top of the transmitter. And this is what they have their optimizing. Here are the gyros. Now what that means is when I push up on the model, okay, when I tilt the model up, I should feel the elevator push against my fingers, and it does. When I tilt the model this way, bank it right, then, or bank it left, that, that control service should turn against the movement, all right? That's how you know a gyro is, is working when it turns against the direction of the movement that you got it in. Okay? So at this point, the model is basically set up and ready to go. Okay? The model in the um, instructions, they give you percentage. Uh, for high rates, 10 millimeter for aileron and elevator, because that's your only control services. They give you 10 millimeters up for high rates on elevator and aileron. And then for a low rate, they give you eight millimeters up or down for uh, elevator for high versus low. Now I'm going to be kind of guessing on that. The safe settings or the stability is preset. You're not gonna mess with that. So you're only gonna be messing with it when you have it in their direct or no gyro mode where you don't hear anything or in the optimized mode. Because the safe or the stability is going to override that and it's going to pick its own values. That's your beginner mode, and that's where I suggest you launch this plane in and then switch to your optimized mode when you're flying. That's just my, my uh, choice, my opinion. Okay? So, look at where I've got that uh, RC Hackers 1500 millimeter uh, forest. I've got it right in the, almost the center of that uh, tray. But my hood 
the battery hatch doesn't like that. It's not wanting to close all the way. So I may have to change. All right, well, we're going to have to change batteries in because I can't close this. Or I'd have to cut some of this out. I really don't want to cut anything out of that. So let me pause for just a minute and get us a different battery. All right, now I've got a battery I'm ha happy with. I'm using a 4S1350 by Perrier, and it fits nice and flat in there. That way the, the canopy, it's the flatter instead of a higher battery. The other thing I've got to do, is now I, got, I know I've got communication, I know everything is centered, I know everything is working right. I'm going to make sure that my, remember I don't have these elevators locked in, right? So I'm going to make sure that they're nice and level, and I'm straight across there. All right, let me look at it from the back one more time. All right, that's nice and level. Now I'm going to take that tool. Remember I said I'm going to not lock them down. Now I'm locking them down. Okay, lock them all down. Try to hold that. All right, that locks my elevator down. back to center. There we go. All right. Everything's working right. Okay. Now we can address CG. This is where I've got, well, I'm start at, where I've got that Liperior right there. Okay. Kind of a little bit forward of the, where they have the strap. So, let's get our ruler. What you need to show your CG, you know what the book says. Book says that it's 60 to 70 uh, millimeters back from the leading edge. Remember, it's the leading edge root. It's where the fuselage touches the uh, wing, where the wing touches the fuselage. Okay, so you're going to need a ruler. I like to use a clear ruler and a sharpie. Okay, you're going to lay. Go ahead and have your. It's nice having a smaller model, you just pick it up. Okay, we said 60 to 70. So we're going to lay it on here. Okay, from the leading edge, you see my numbers there. Let me get in higher. Okay, get closer. All right, I'm going to pull that. If I get put the sevens lined up with the uh, right there with the root. Okay, I'm going to lay that down. Can't hold it and do it at the same time. Take the seven there. Line it up and we'll find my zero. Mark it. Now we'll pull it out to the six when the six is lined up. And mark that zero there. Okay? So I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to put the seven. Mark the zero. And pull it out to the six. And mark, mark it. Now, once you got down the top of your wing, are those two marks? That's the 60 to 70 millimeters back. So if you put your wing where you got your battery, and you put your fingers right there, that should not quite see you. Real tell you're gonna be nose heavy. So that means I'm gonna to need to pull that battery and push it back. Probably gonna find the battery's gonna to have to go almost all the way back. Put the battery all the way back. Okay. Put my fingers on there. And pretty close. So let's get her on the CG machine so that my finger is not influencing that. Okay. I'm going to line up with the center. Throw it up my head in the way. Let me pull this. CG machine in a little bit. Alright, let's pull that in there a little bit. Line it up there. Line it up there. I think we're going to still be a little nose heavy. Yeah, a little bit nose heavy. Yeah, okay. That means I'm going to have to move that battery. 
I'm wanting to use that battery, I'm going to have to move that battery back even further. And that's okay, I can do that. Just put it right there. Anchor that down. Let's see how I like that. I will also measure it. That's almost perfect. Yep. All right. I'm happy with that. While we got it sitting there, let's go ahead and put our measurements on the other side. Put it on the seven. Mark my zero. Pull it out to the six or 60 millimeters. Mark my zero. Holding the model steady. Put it on the seven. Pull it out to 60, mark my zero. Now you can see I've got two places underneath that wing now. Let's see, it should be exactly the same. Pretty much. Pretty close. Pretty darn close. Look at that. Whoa! <laughs> Pretty darn close, anyways. Put that on there. Okay. That's pretty good. See, now my fingers aren't manipulating it because you inadvertently will try to hold it with the ends of your fingers. So you don't drop it. You do that you know, subconsciously. So that is pretty good. So that tells me that where I've got the battery at now is where I want to CG. So now I'm going to open up my canopy. And I'm going to make a little line in here. And know that from that point back, this battery is almost dead, so I'm not going to use it. But I made a little line in there. And then I know that from this point back is where I'm going to want to mount my battery, and that's when she'll CG. Now, if I wanted, if I'm going to fly her to the wind, I may move that. It's going to be windy. I may move the battery forward just a touch, um, and maybe use, use a bigger battery. It's going to be a little nose heavy, but that's better for a high wind. Um, if it's a nice calm day, I may put that battery slap there and and uh, fly around like that. But uh, there you go, that's how you measure CG. You go from the, the manual, and then you just move your battery back and forth, and when you get her nice and level, take your Sharpie and mark it down, and then of course mark it on the... Now, I won't carry the CG with me, CG machine when I go to the field. I'll use my fingers, but that still gives you a rough idea that you're pretty close. I mean, it ain't going to be exact, exact, but it needs to be fairly close. So, anyways, rates on this, I'm just going to use... Um, probably going to use 100% throws and 20% expo for high and then 80% with 20% uh, um, expo for low. I'll probably do 180 or 190 and 80. So, so 80 for uh, elevators. Elevator and, and any of the ones all you got. So I'll probably do 80 for low, 90 for mid, and 100 for uh, for uh, high, twenty percent expo all the way around, and that's pretty much it. Um, these little, and then I may just adjust that accordingly, just depends on how she reacts. Um, she's a fairly, she's going to be fairly fast on 4S, but these are very stable little planes. And like I said, when you see in the maiden, I'm going to launch her with the uh, stability mode, and uh, I like launching the Viper underhanded. Um, but I'll probably show it um, with the hand throws that they have, just so I can, so you know what it's like. But I'll probably end up using the uh, underhand toss. That's what I'm more comfortable with. And I'll be using the uh, 1350 Liperior 4S. Yeah. 
All right, folks, well, there you go. That's the basic radio setup. I mean, I was having a timer set for three and a half minutes. My throws are going to be 100, 100% for high, 90% uh, for mid, and 80% for low. Um, showed you how to set up the uh, um, vector system, and I showed you CG, and I showed you timer. So can't really think of anything else we're living, leaving out. It's pretty much, I mean, I'm sure the stuff I'm leaving out. Um, it's a pretty simple little plane. It's just meant to, you know, throw it in the back of your truck or the back of your car and take it down to the local ball field and toss it around and fly around a couple of minutes and just enjoy. And hopefully you'll get a couple more of these. Now, if you're interested in this great little plane, like I said, this is the second time I've had this. I've got the first one over there still. And uh, we'll do the maiden on this hopefully tomorrow. And uh, if you're interested in it, there'll be a link for the purchase of this plane in the description of this video. Um, use that link, it'll take you to Hobby Zone, find the plane, put it in your basket, and use my code that I'll provide for you, which is all caps FGFRC, FGFRC, and you can take $10 off the price of the plane. I mean, Tim, I think she's $159, so it should be $149. You can put that towards buying yourself a couple batteries. Um, I may fly her in a stock, in a 1300, I know, I'm sorry, not a 13, but an 1800 3S just to show you she can fly on 3S, but I won't use a 1300. They're just too small. That's it, the you know, perfect case scenario, perfectly calm. You know, they they give you that smaller battery to make it economical, and yes, it will fly on it, but it's gonna fly slow. It, it'd be more beginner friendly. I want a little performance out of it, so I'm gonna use a 4S, but I do not recommend, I don't, I'm not telling you to do that, because the manufacturer doesn't recommend it. Um, but I'm telling you, that's what I'm going to do. But I won't fly full speed either all the time. I will um, you have shore burst uh, full speed, but other than that, I just kind of cruise along about three, three quarters throttle most of the time. But they're just simple little plane, toss and boss, a lot of fun, inexpensive as far as RC planes go, and they give you a lot of performance for what you get in the package. Thank you for uh, watching. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for just stopping by and, and seeing what Fat Guy is all about. And I want to thank you all. Y'all have a good one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless y'all. And don't forget, faith, family, and friends. No gents. Bye-bye. I have to go over here to turn this on. Uh, real quick, I wanted to add, I forgot to about, talk about the ESC calibration. The motor, the battery's in there. She's plugged in. And now I have, I barely touch it, and I've got immediate throttle response. That way I know my... The ESC's caliber, but let me walk you through that. Okay, we know we're we know we're connected, right? You're gonna unplug your model, put your throttle all the way up, plug it back in. You're gonna let it go through its initial beeps, let the gyro go through its dance. As soon as it's done with the dance, pull your throttle down. Okay, time remaining three minutes. Dance. Pull it down. Three cell count. Do I have a three cylinder now? Got immediate throttle response, and that's how you calibrate your ESC. Now I will try it on a 3S, but it's going to be an 1800 with a 50C discharge, pretty much in the same spot I had before us in there. Okay. I wonder how. So, anyways, that's what I'm going to do, and. I put a little piece of Velcro. I did change the position because to get that 4S in there where I wanted it, I had to move the Gen 2, the receiver, I actually turned it around, shoved it in that way, and then put one antenna out the side and taped it down, and the other antenna is long in this way. That way, one's kind of going this way and that way, and they're kind of at 90 degrees, but it gave me a little more room for the batter. I actually gained that much more room to uh, put a 4 cell in there. Remember, the bigger the battery, the further back you go, the lighter the battery, the further forward you go. All right, I just want to add that, and I'll put that in part of the video. Uh, and now I'll end it. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want the jet, there'll be a link. And use that code, you can take some money off. All right, y'all have a good one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless y'all. Faith, family, and friends. The jets. Bye-bye.